question. Oh. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me we were on? <laughs> my next guest is a, hello. My next guest is a superb actress. She is currently starring in the Broadway thriller Night Watch, and perhaps she can repair my chair when she gets out. <laughs> well, just have to make do. Uh, she's currently starring in the Bro I'm gonna stand, this thing's collapsing. <laughs> in the Broadway thriller Night Watch, which uh, was based on, uh, I mean, not based on, but it's uh, modeled after, uh, it's not even, it's not modeled after anything. <laughs> Get out here, Joan Hackett, and fix my chair. I'll tell you what I mean. <laughs> Oh, no, those are real people applauding. That's Joan is nearsighted and thought maybe that was canned applause. <laughs> no. uh, I'll tell you what I was trying to say there. I was grasping... Oh, there's the phone. <laughs> Do you want to get it or, or shall I? <laughs> Does anyone know there's a show going on here? Uh, I was, what I was trying to say about your play was that it's sort of in the tradition of Dial in for Murder in that it's a thriller. Uh, I, and I got into stammering all about how it was modeled after it. All, all wrong, of course. I merely meant to say that if you enjoyed Dial in for Murder, as nearly everyone did, they would enjoy your play, too. That's now good. now I'll answer a, the phone. That was a very nice introduction. You're right. obviously quite qu quickly recognized and popular from your films and various things. Uh, I mean... Is that why everyone applauded? Yeah, you got that little added margin of applause. That, that was uh, the question indicates. I asked, because I thought, you know, sometimes there are machines that go up and say, applaud now, and, and I never know if it's for me or not. And if it is, I thank you very much. And if it isn't, uh, please don't I tell her. <laughs> <laughs> say, the espionage ring that works for me <laughs> tells me that your bedroom ceiling is falling. Isn't everyone's? <laughs> what, you, what is that about? I, I couldn't help asking about this. I just woke to find it uh, on me one morning. You know, it, it falls periodically, it, little pieces fall down. This is true then, the plaster is coming down. Right? You see, we just moved in in November from Los Angeles to New York City. Mm -hmm. It took me about a year and a half to find an apartment. Yeah. And indeed, it's, it's splendid. It overlooks the park and it's quite lovely. It's just falling apart. And now I find everyone's is. I mean, everyone I talked to, isn't yours? No, not the ceiling isn't falling in. I had an apartment the ceiling fell in one yes, time, but I was... Yes, just before uh, you moved, right? Yeah. I almost got the apartment you that you have. moved out of. I mean, I, but when I was looking serious? desperately, yes, someone said, say, Dick and his wife are trying to... And there it is. And but except the ceiling the was, was coming down in part of it. Yeah, Jose Greco lived upstairs. <laughs> I think that was probably... Everyone <laughs> I know has ceiling problems. I think the city is just uh, collapsing in a number of it's ways. It's unfortunate, and one of them. it really is. I just hope, yeah. I don't know what to do about it. Because it's really coming in great droves. Could you put a kind of large hairnet across the <laughs> The bed, a canopy, just, that's a terrific idea. Things, yeah. No one will notice the ceiling. Well, that's dangerous. I, I hope it only falls in small pieces. It looks you. over the park, though. That's the, that's the nice part. And, and it's, yeah. it's large. And I feel very fortunate to get into the city at all. You know, once you put your foot outside the door in New York, it's all... And then try and get back. It really took me a year and a half of steady weeping nightly over the times because yeah. everything had grown to such grotesque proportions of rents and things. Yeah. And it is a terrific city to me, anyway. I know, it still is yeah. great. Uh, I, I get letters from I came down here on I the number 10 the bus. The number 10 bus? Yes, and as Where's I got... You know, it runs down Central Park. Yeah. And I came with the dress I'm wearing. It's a good idea to run down Central Park. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I guess it is maybe in the summertime. So far, it's, yeah. it's terrific. I got on the bus, and, and um, I sat with curlers in my hair, which is something I've never done before. But I'm getting to be a very public person. After uh, the interviews I've had, everything's been exposed, and I find there is no real privacy in life. Oh, what are some of the things that have been exposed? <laughs> oh. Well, I've made many people unhappy, unfortunately. Friends, which I do feel bad about. My family threatens to sue me. All said with great, uh, in great fun, most of the things, like they're a little mad. And, you know, that was meant to be charming, but they took it quite earnestly and seriously. And also things are, are taken out of, not, it, it, it's such a cliche out of context. It's not that one doesn't say it. It's that you don't say that. Well, Malcolm X once said the most terrific quote. He said, if I said, Mary had a little lamb. The mm -hmm. press would say, Malcolm X lampoons Mary. 
And and mm -hmm. that's it's that you it's Let's not that you don't say you. those words. Your public statements become come back to haunt Listen, you. Listen, I'm very fortunate on the whole. The press are very kind to me. Do you know? But there are things like Rex, Rex's article, which I must say I laughed at a great deal because it said. Uh, he said to me, Do you, have you ever taken drugs? It was one of the questions. Uh, very mm -hmm. late in the morning, from midnight until 4.30, we, we had this interview. It was an exhausting day. And uh, I said, well, when I was 17, I was trying to diet, and I took Benzedrine. And in the article, it says, at 17, I wanted to die and took Benzedrine. I thought, what a terrific way to go out. <laughs> like that. Do you know what I mean? How would you die on Benzedrine? It would be such a, <laughs> it would be, <laughs> But that, since that was personally to me. Died in seven places, dancing. <laughs> yes, that's right. Diet became die in the interview. Yes. But it was Rex late, Reed. you know. Yes. Must have had something in his ears. Some of the well. things. Also, the notes were taken very in casually and not very clearly. So he had to do what he remembered, mm -hmm. you know. And, and many of them make very good print and are kind of fun or kooky. But uh, unfortunately, really, people in mind. I have an exquisite sister who's bright and brought up the three children on her own, and it really came out kind of just a little bit nasty to her, and, and she has been deeply offended, and I had hoped I could correct it, and I, am, I graciously thank you for that yes. time now to do that, because we, we'll never talk again, most likely. You know? <laughs> and that is painful. Curiously enough, succeeding gets to be much more painful than failing. Do you know, as a kid, I was a, the worst student, and everybody loved me. Do you know you what I mean? You were the worst student? Yeah. Oh, yes, I was an appalling student. Oh, One no, I never I'd like went. to know about that. Sorry. I, uh, yeah. we, yeah. let, let's see how we compare on that. We, we just have to take a message right now. Yeah. We'll right. <laughs> talking with Joan Hackett. Did you marry the man who seduced you uh, in... Uh, <laughs> you haven't heard the entire question yet <laughs> in, the, in the movie The Group. I did. There, I see I wasn't yeah. being... My mother-in-law wrote me a letter and said, well, thank God you made an honest woman of her. Uh, yeah. She believed the whole movie. So but, but you married... You married we actually knew each of... other about a year prior to doing the film. Mm -hmm. And then Sidney came up to me one day and said, uh, listen, I found an actor I'd like you to test with. And I said, who? And he said, Richard Mulligan. And I said, Sidney, you're putting me on. Sidney Lumet. Lumet, yes. Right. And he said, no, why would I do that? And I, I said, well... Richard and I are planning to marry. And he said, oh, well, hell, then you don't have to test. <laughs> it, was just, it was just, he Is just assumed. these days that people who are getting married don't have to have screen tests? <laughs> well, not in that kind of a scene. Unfortunately, we yeah. ran on television recently, and they cut out our scene because it was the, the seduction scene. So my whole part was down the drain. Oh, on the TV on the Yeah, tube, that's right, yes. they took it out. I don't know why. It was really quite innocent. Yeah. There wasn't a piece of skin showing. And yet, Any it was considered too daring for now. I guess so. I, I don't know. It's funny how television and movies are different, yet the same people, do, well, Cutting it goes into sometimes. the home. Cutting I think somebody well. should do a whole article on how you cut and why you cut, when you cut. Do you know when you break right in the middle of a sentence? Mm -hmm. I mean, a great movie. And some actor, you see, they're shaking their head. They agree, too. Which way are they it shaking? It does seem, up, up and down. Yeah. It does seem to be almost as if there's some gremlin out there with a perverse sense of dark yeah. humor. You, you know what I want to know, and I always meant to ask every director who's been on, is something I've noticed in the beginning when I was a kid going to movies. Why is it that they cut in such a way that we're talking like this now, and then they change the shot, and it's supposedly the next sentence, but the person is clearly sitting this yes. way, and then they cut back, and he's clearly sitting this way, and you can see that they shot them at different times, and why they can't match that, I don't know. It's, you, know, you mean on television, not in film? No, in movies. In, film? in movies. They're always, it's just he's a very little farther work. forward when they cut to another shot That's than he was when they're back dude. here. That's it, just it, bad work. Just sloppiness Absolutely. Is the technical Because the old Hollywood, that. you would never do that. I'm told that Mr. Bogart, Humphrey Bogart, yeah. was so brilliant at doing precise... I mean, he really had a computer in his head. He could come back four weeks later and do precisely. And that does take... In. Yes, that Did takes it? a very special kind of talent. Well, to do apparently art. the Polaroid camera has helped that because they can now take a picture <laughs> yes, a, a, as they, and then stop the camera for a minute and then uh, They always take a picture of what Polaroid you look like. see exactly where they were. Yeah. Well, especially costume-wise. Costume and hair have to because they do match it months later, you know, so you're always getting your picture taken like you're in Rogue's Gallery and they it turn out awful. Too. It does happen with hair too. I mean, like you've got your hair, Absolutely. you've bunched your hair up just now and then in the next time they cut That's to you, right. it's different and it's obviously shot on a different day. But we were talking about your being a bad student in school. Oh, what, yes. what, didn't you, did you hate school? I liked all of the students and all of the nuns who taught me, but I was very poor at being interested in 
anything that didn't have to do with why you were who you were. That's really what interested me. I interviewed every nun that ever taught me and why she became one and usually found out what she looked like before and whether she really wanted and that was a book. That's all that interested me. So I played a great deal of hooky. I mean excessively from the, from the time of the first grade on. Hooky. So I learned nothing. How'd you get away with it, though? These, these I was terrific. No, you know what happened? I was so polite yeah. and gracious. And always, I would stay after school if you wanted and clean the board. Anything mm. but not the work. Just don't ask me to do that nonsense, do you see? And it was to me. I mean, history was poor. History now for kids is great because Channel, can I say another channel? Mm. 13? Is it sure. all right? It's, it's our great champion because I've learned so much about things that would, I mean, who, the Civil War is one paragraph in school. One paragraph. What does that got to do with anything? Yeah. And why bother? But how did you know that as a kid? Usually you realize those things years later. And it, I was it's a guru. rare to rebel like that. I was that. a guru at three. <laughs> a guru? <laughs> yes. Well, I, I now, this may not be true, but if it is, I'm intrigued. It said that you didn't speak until you were eight or something in one of well, those Well, I things. didn't. Um, have very much to say, actually. No, uh, it was a it was a volatile household. They yeah. were they were uh, passionately involved with their lives. Where was this? Uh, first in Manhattan, in uh -huh. Harlem, and then in Queens, in Elmhurst, and uh, for about a year or two, I think, in Brooklyn. And uh, that was a very unhappy time because it was not a very nice section. We used to pray every night, please God, let us go back to Elmhurst. Isn't that awful? You usually get applause when you say Brooklyn, but it was painful for us. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there, there wasn't, uh, it just, I didn't do anything until it became social, until after school started. You know, I never said, pass me the salt or anything. Mm -hmm. There was nothing very much to say. So I played possum is what it was. Yeah. Because if I talked too much, all those other people were talking so much louder and had so many important things to say. And I had a kid brother, a, just a year behind me, and we were friends, and we made up stories. And, we, and I must say, I'm very grateful that I had a man, and I did think of him as that, as mm -hmm. my close friend, do you know? Rather than a girl? You, or rather a woman? than a sister. Yes, be, uh, although I would have liked my older sister and I to have been closer, we were seven years apart, so that made it very hard to know her. She's a big kid, do you know? And yeah. we were the babies. But we were, so we were children together. And my mother and father and sister were very closely tied together and very involved with a kind of volatile personalities, really. So my brother and I kind of, um, I made the poor kid play house a lot. I don't know how, and I used to really con him terribly about the fairies and the brownies. And you know when you, when you wash the dishes, if you put the dish upside down, a glass, it moves on its own from the air. Yeah. Well. I told him it was the brownies, and he bought it till he was seven. <laughs> he, I had him constantly, and it's then he grew up. the brownies? <laughs> and then, then one day he grew up and looked me level in the eye and said, no, I'm not going to buy that kind of a suit. And I'm, and I'm very, very fond of him. I really That's am. That's very nice. Yeah. It ain't brownies that makes a glass one. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure it and, was. You know, but We're, things did, nature did wonderful things that I could say were mystical to him. Yeah. And he believed me. That's nice. I wish I'd had a sister like you. Thank you. How nice Is of you to late? say that. No. We have a message. We'll be back. <laughs>